I had a joke that was scrapped out of my videos about how the sorts of people that talk about banning guns are usually people who have zero understanding about what guns are. How can I take the news seriously when people say full semi-automatic without irony? If I wanted to fire this on full semi-automatic, all I do is keep firing. Oh, you mean semi-auto but you fire it rapidly by pulling the trigger faster? What about those who cannot distinct between a semi-auto or a full auto? Or those who decide to shout nonsense like semi-assault weapons? Two Nevada gun shops and one in Utah tell us they sold guns to the suspect legally. Semi-assault weapons and ammo. Semi-assault weapons and ammo. Semi-assault weapons and ammo. Like, what the hell are you talking about? The only guns that I hold in my life are toys, and even I know the difference. Hell, I trust a 10-year-old Call of Duty gamer to talk about guns more than the mainstream media did. And let's not forget the glorious chainsaw bayonet last year, which was so ridiculous that all sides in the political spectrum makes fun of it. So yes, the sorts of people who don't understand guns are now talking about banning guns or taking your rights of self-preservation just because a bunch of lunatics use it in the wrong way. You know, just like how people want to ban video games because some school shooters play video games. Why can't we have people who understand guns to talk about guns? I mean, just look at the video game community. We don't have people who have zero idea about video games talk about banning or censoring video games. And that was the joke. And then I cried. I cried realizing that my joke is only funny because it's the truth. And I'm the joker who has to tell the world about it, but everyone will dismiss me as just a lunatic weeb with very wild and crazy ideas, like wanting to make his own animation studio. I mean, God forbid this 20-year-old man trying to make his dream come true. So, nobody believed me, and I am doomed to witness humanity imploding into pieces, doomed into an early death thanks to their own ignorance. When a school shooting happened, the first person to blame should absolutely be the shooter. But unfortunately, this is not the reality that we live in. We live in a reality where people would instead blame other things, like guns, or even bizarrely, people who enjoy internet drama. And of course, we live in a world where people would blame video games. I thought this sort of thing died in the 90s. I thought that people would just stop doing it after the countless and countless of studies that prove that video games do not cause violence, especially when you compare the reduction of violent crime in correlation with the rise of video game sales. But one of the rule of laws in this hopeless and depressing world is that history is eventually going to repeat itself. A video game called Doom was released to the public with great success, and people are talking about how video games are violent, and we should find ways to them or something. It's literally the 90s all over again. And so we have an article from CNN, written by a professor who thinks that VR games are literal boot camps. So before we begin this tripe of an article, I want to say huge thanks to our new sponsors of the day, Curry Wallace and Jeffrey for the pledges on Patreon, and also a late shout out to Garrett for the donation on PayPal. You guys are keeping me sane out of this really insane world that we live in. Last week, Dick Sporting Good banned the sales of assault-style rifles and Walmart raised the age of all gun buyers to 21. While our politicians debate next steps, these companies took swift action. Virtual reality hardware and software companies, which design top-selling video games, should follow suit. Hey Ryder, out of interest, have you ever played video games? Have you ever actually experienced what it's like shooting people in video games? It's actually pretty freaking fun, especially when being done in a competitive market. But you know what else that you need to know about video games? There are very simplified simulation of the things that they are simulating. It's rare for video games to be capable of simulating whatever experience they're simulating to a 100% accuracy. There are always going to be trade-offs for the sake of fun. That's why video games would just embrace the Doom guy who can carry multiple weapons and not reload them, or the leader of a street gang somehow becoming president of the United States. It is pure unadulterated fantasy, with a very simplified version of combat. You can't exactly shoot people with a freaking PS4 controller. At least people in real life anyway. Video games have one mandate, to be fun but the companies that create and market them must also be socially and morally aware. They must consider the kind of experiences they are developing, especially in first-person shooter games. Socially and morally aware. You are arguing on the basis of feelings, which is not a good start. People always fear what they don't understand. People fear about the damage, the skill, and the indescribable terror that Cthulhu possesses into the world. How much damage that he can do to bring total destruction into the universe. And most importantly, whether or not Haruhi Suzumiya will take it down, or assist it on its conquest of the universe destruction. Or maybe she would ask Nyarlat Hotep for help, and even then, I don't know what kind of help that she wanted. Am I rambling? Yes, I am rambling, because talking about anything else is better than this tripe. But the writer has points to say, so let's march on. 
There is at least one documented case of a killer using a first-person shooter game to improve his combat skills. According to The Guardian, the Norwegian shooter Anders Breivik told the court in 2012 that he used a holographic aiming device in the game Call of Duty to develop his target acquisition abilities. Holographic aiming device. You mean a freaking light gun? Man, speaking of light gun, I'm still waiting for Time Crisis 5 to be on the arcades here. Sorry, I'm rambling again. And I think I need to be a bit fair to the writer. He's not saying that light gun Call of Duty games are causing people to become school shooters. It's just that video games are facilitating them to train. We all know that Anders Breivik did it for many other reasons, but let's read the cited Guardian article to get some clarifications anyway. While reading the cited Guardian article, I get a very interesting clarification. Actually free. The clarifications are, the writer for the CNN article, the freaking founder of Stanford Virtual Human Interaction Lab and a professor in the Department of Communication, 1. Does not know about video games, 2. Does not know about guns, and 3. Only read the headline for the article without reading the actual content. So what is inside the content of the Guardian article that proved those three points? Well, let's start off with the headline. The headline says that Anders Breivik trained for shooting attacks by playing Call of Duty. He practiced his shots using a holographic aiming device. I was actually wrong to assume that this thing is a light gun of some sort. No, what they refer to as a holographic aiming device is actually a freaking reflex sight. So the argument from Breivik is that thanks to Call of Duty, specifically Modern Warfare, he knows how to line his targets using the holographic sight, like your reflex sights, red dots, etc. Apparently, his claim is that being familiar with holographic sight is capable of making your grandmother to be a super marksman. It is designed to be used by anyone and it requires very little training to use in an optimal way. There's nothing friendly or scary about Breivik saying that he learns how to aim down sights thanks to a video game. He might as well as say, I also learned how to hold the gun properly by using my hands instead of my legs. Breivik played a two-dimensional game, but whoa, virtual whoa, reality whoa, 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 stop right there. Stop right there. Call of Duty is not a two-dimensional game. You mean two-dimensional as in you play the game by looking at a two-dimensional screen? You're well aware that you're playing the game in a 3D environment, right? You can jump, you can sprint, you can shoot people above, you can shoot people down, you can shoot people behind you, you can take cover using the chest high walls or a nearby corner. My god, I think you should stop from saying anything before you continue to embarrass yourself. But virtual reality can take skill acquisition to a new level. Players can look all around the scene instead of just staring at a screen. Stop, 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 stop. You can look around the scene by just staring at the screen because you have this thing called a mouse or a controller using the right analog stick. You can control the camera. You can control where the players look at using these devices. Your wording is so horrendous that it makes you look like a fool. I think you should stop talking before you continue to embarrass yourself. Handheld devices vibrate to simulate touch. Most stop, 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 stop. Have you ever heard of Nintendo Wii? The two main issues that the Wii have in terms of its controls are the high latency on the motion controls and the lack of physical feedback. So when you swing a sword, for example, the sword will bump into another sword or the enemy, but your Wiimote will still fly around, completely breaking the immersion even if it vibrates. Even if you're using the gun peripheral, none of those or even the actual gun con on the PS2 will ever simulate what it's like to feel the recoil of a real gun. Most importantly, players use their arms and body to engage in natural combat moves instead of just hitting buttons. As a stop, result stop. Jesus Christ, how many times do I have to stop you? No. Name me a VR game that doesn't involve you hitting a button to do certain actions. Every VR peripheral these days uses their own controllers. There is no VR game sold in public that can truly read the individual movements of your fingers. Even the HTZ Vive still involves you pressing the buttons in the controller. If you're talking about the Kinect, we all know how that thing is freaking broken. And that thing is not even VR. As a result, the brain's smarter system is engaged. Repeated movement while in virtual reality causes changes in brain structure, which in turn improves performance in the real world. In other words, virtual reality is the ultimate training machine. There is a difference between virtual reality might cause changes in brain structure and virtual reality is capable of turning you into a professional assassin. 
Also, did you guys notice how none of the most notable VR peripherals are mentioned in this article? No mentions of Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, PlayStation VR, or even any of those individual words. How can you write an article about VR and not mention any of those peripherals or even reference one specific VR game? It's like talking about the history of first person shooters without mentioning or referencing Doom. Or like the last week's video, making an article about romance games without referencing any of these. My argument here is not that virtual reality games are going to cause people to become violent, or that law enforcement or the military for example shouldn't have access to them, but if a possible mass shooter wants to hone his craft, we shouldn't hand him an over-the-counter digital boot camp. Okay. How? Video games and VR peripherals are sold publicly. How can you specifically restrict people from buying video games? I mean, should we have background checks when buying video games or something? And then there are steps we can take to strike a balance between fun and safety. I'm listening. First, let's change the physics of bullets. Think about a frisbee. In order to hit a target straight ahead, one needs to arc it to one side to account for its return swing. If virtual reality bullets also travel with a slight curve, then virtual shooters would always be pointing away from a target in order to eventually hit it. That is officially, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most idiotic statements that I have ever heard in my entire life. So people who are playing video games in VR will shoot anything but the target. However, the goal for shooting a gun is still hitting the freaking target. I think the idea here is to shoot people slightly off axis so that they don't actually point the gun to real life people who might be potential targets. But that entire premise is built under the assumption that gamers or even school shooters are stupid enough to emulate this in real life, which is frankly more insulting than insinuating that video games cause violence in the first place. If you shoot people slightly off axis in video games, you'll end up making a really frustrating game and people are still going to learn the difference between shooting a gun in video games and shooting a gun in real life. Actually, making people to shoot guns off axis would be a great idea for a wanted VR game where you can actually curve the freaking bullets to hit the target. This learned side aiming would likely carry over to the real world and people would have trouble hitting a target straight ahead. Oh my god, you actually believe that this is going to work? You actually believe that people are so stupid and moronic that they're gonna follow the examples of video games in order how to freaking aim? If you're gonna punish the player for daring to have fun in video games, might as well as program a game in which there's a 10% chance that the bullet will curve back to your head. A more subtle example can be seen in paintball, which is pellets that move slower than real bullets and subsequently slightly change the way shooters aim the guns based on gravity, wind, and other factors. Again, all of this is built on the premise that gamers will emulate them in real life. Even if you have a school shooter who played your type of first-person VR shooter that shoots the guns off axis and make the bullets to have a better impact, I am very certain that school shooters will be smart enough to distinguish between how a gun in VR feels and how a gun in real life feels. I am so baffled by this really dumb idea. The only way for you to suggest these ridiculously dumb ideas is if you have zero experience in video games games or zero experience in VR games. Since you don't even mention any of the current gen VR peripherals, I doubt that you even know what you're talking about. And you know what's the worst part? That's not even the dumbest suggestion. Second, guns in games shouldn't have the mechanics of real ones. You shouldn't hold a realistically weighted gun-shaped object and pull a trigger in virtual reality. Instead, to operate a virtual gun, you should flick your wrist or bend your elbow. Here's also a revolutionary idea, writer. You shouldn't hold a realistically weighted gun-shaped object. You hold this thing called a freaking mouse. You point to the general direction that you want and you shoot your gun by pressing the left click button. You can also hold this thing called the controller, where you use the right analog stick to aim and the right trigger to shoot. This is so freaking dumb, I am astonished that this writer even gets any sorts of publication. Even if you're talking about VR controllers like the HTC Vive or the PS Move, they still cannot emulate the feeling of holding real guns. And do you seriously think that people will emulate your VR shooter game mechanics in real life? Oh man, I think one of the best ways for us to shoot a gun is to bend our elbows and flick our wrists instead of pulling the freaking trigger. I also have a great idea, writer. We reload our weapons by shooting the gun off screen or shaking the gun like you're trying to fap to it. 
Before you discount this idea, think about the wildly entertaining types of weapons one typically sees in superhero movies, guns that are far too big for normal people to carry, for example. This way, muscle memory for virtual guns will be abstract, a player can log hundreds of hours as a virtual shooter and be utterly perplexed when picking up a natural gun. Oh my god, Ryder. You legit think that at least a significant portion of gamers around the world are dumb enough to think that they can handle real-life guns the same way they handle video game guns? It's insane how the Ryder treats us like infants who don't know any better. I have no idea if I'm supposed to be angry or sad, but I can say for certain that the emotions are not positive. Another change that makes sense, and I am happy that most, though not all virtual reality games are adopting this strategy, is to have the targets in games to be non-human. For example, virtual shooters should aim at robots. Robots move and are shaped differently from humans, but designers can animate them to move much faster than humans, or to have skills that humans don't, like flying. Hence, virtual reality would teach skills that would not work as well when aiming at people. This is a dumb idea. This is a monstrously dumb idea. It's not dumb because the targets are not human. No, it is dumb because you literally suggested video games to have a target that is faster, more agile, and can actually fly. Which means that regardless of the target, by your logic, the shooter will be trained to aim faster and be more agile throughout the environment. Which means that by the time the shooter actually shoots people, those who run away from the shooter will have little to no chance in escaping because the shooter is trained to follow the targets much much, much faster. Oh sure, robots can fly and humans cannot. Sure, robots are not the same as human beings. They can be even faster than them. But you know what else did people use as training? Shooting targets. Some of them can be programmed to move, even faster than human beings actually. Replacing the targets would do nothing. You're still gonna have the shooter to shoot, except this time his reflexes are better because he's shooting a more agile, more flexible target even more so than human beings. The suggestion to remove human beings as targets in a video game is done purely out of emotional reasons, all made without any sense of logic, coherence, or purpose. All made just because you are personally disgusted seeing people being shot on screen even if they are fictional. Writer, can you stop being a moron for just one second? In a perfect world, Perhaps we wouldn't have virtual shooters at all. No, 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 no. That's your perfect world, writer. You are scared of shooters in general. This is because you don't understand them. Have you ever played a shooter? Have you ever played those light gun games in the arcade? Have you ever played shooters with the mouse and keyboard or with a controller? Have you ever played shooters with the HTC Vive controllers or the PS Move controllers? A lot of these assumptions that you made are based on pure speculation and unbridled emotions. I have no freaking idea why would someone who owned guns take their shooting practices on freaking video games. And now let's talk about whether or not there will be VR shooters that manage to simulate what real Battlefield feels like into the public. Since I understand what VR games are capable of, since I personally have experienced games in VR, I know their limitations. I know what they can do and what they can't do. So I went in to check your 16-page paper that you cited to prove the fact that VR can improve performances in the real world. But the paper, just like the article, did not have any reference to the Vive, the PS Move, or even the Oculus Rift. The reason is because the paper doesn't talk about those, but instead it mostly talks about more advanced virtual reality techs. For example, the cave, which was built in the University of Illinois at Chicago, which is a room-sized 3D video and auditory system. There are other systems being referenced in the paper, but that's ultimately irrelevant since none of them are talking about VR games. I think one of the biggest mistakes that the writer made is comparing the more advanced VR technologies in that paper with the VR technologies that are accessible to the public right now. Will we have a future in which these advanced VR tech will be available to the public? Probably, but I highly doubt that any of these VR techs would be able to emulate the feeling of shooting a real-life gun anytime soon. Sure, it can train us to be more agile and have better reflexes perhaps, but guns are heavy. Guns have recoil. No matter how trained you are in the VR world, it's not going to be the same as real life, especially when the VR tech that we have right now are not immersive enough to provide that experience. Virtual reality is on the cusp of becoming a mainstream consumer product, and every year content becomes more and more realistic. Lucky for the designing companies, they have a little more time to think through some of the potential negative consequences of what they are creating. There are none. You haven't provided a single negative 
consequence. All you did was to fearmonger the public about the dangers of VR shooters. Your Anders Breivik example is a horrendous one because aiming down the gun's sight is a training that is about as basic as holding it. Your suggestions in fixing VR shooters range from idiotic to most certainly backfire. All of this is easily because of the three reasons that I've mentioned previously, plus the fact that you are so emotional about this, you can't put aside your bias to confront some of the more relevant facts. All of these traits are very much consistent throughout this entire tripe of an article. You don't even have the decency to mention the recent VR hardwares that are prominent in gaming. I doubt that you even know the differences between each of them. So there you have it. Thanks to the recent tragedies, fear of the unknown has caused so many people to talk about things that they don't understand and trying to eradicate them because they don't understand them and they fear that those things will cause dangers in the future. I think one of the best ways for us to grow as human beings is if we confront our biggest fears. And the only thing that these moral guardians fear is the notion of touching a freaking controller. Thank you